Okay guys, tonight we're talking Switch, and I really want to talk about the cartridges that the games will be put on. Now, there was a, an announcement, well not really an announcement, a rumor that came out <clears throat> from uh, Takashi Machizuki, it was uh, on Twitter, he put out a little tweet that basically talked about the size of the cartridges, I'll put that up here for you so you can see. He seems to think, um, I'm not really sure where he got this information from, he seems to think that the standard Switch game card uh, when it launches, will be it'll be around 16 gigs, um, gigabytes, which is a little weird. Uh, and then he what goes on to say enough for one layer Blu-ray game, which uh, I'll tell you now that's not the case. Uh, a single layer Blu-ray holds 25 gigs, a dual layer holds 50. I'm not sure if he was uh, off on his numbers or if he was confused or he's not sure how much single layer holds, but it, it is 25. And that kind of threw me off a little bit, only because I had a feeling that Nintendo would not go backwards with their storage media, considering the Wii U used like a proprietary Blu-ray type disc format that held 25 gigs. I'm, I'm pretty confident it was just a single layer Blu-ray. Of course, they're not going to say that, I guess. I don't know. But it appeared to hold 25 gigs. And if they want to be porting Wii U games to the Switch, now, of course, a lot of the Wii U games didn't use that entire disc. They did that just, I guess, just in case. I mean, it was cheap enough. It wasn't a big deal. But if they want to be porting games to the Switch and not have to worry about things like Pat, like like um, Xenoblade, for example, I can tell you that was that was well above 16 gigs. So I, had to, I had to download a bunch of it, um, and I assume just because of that, like extra textures and stuff. I remember I downloaded from the shop because of that. I don't think they would want to go to a 16 gig cart if they're going to move this game, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, or Xenoblade X or whatever is, is going to it. That's that's weird. I don't understand why they would do that. So. My thought here is that it's going to be a 32 gig card. So if you don't already know, the Nintendo, the 3DS uses uh, something called a mask ROM and that's in the cartridges. And what that is, it's basically a, a chip that holds the game data that the system reads. And it's not a chip that this device like the 3DS can write back to. When you save your games, it goes to a second chip, which is SRAM. So you have two chips, you have a mask ROM and you have SRAM. And I can actually show you a really cool example of this. Let me, uh, you know what? Let me grab a Super Nintendo cart. Check this out. So Mask ROMs and SRAM has been they've been used since the Super Nintendo. They even used it on the uh, the Nintendo, the original Nintendo, in some bigger games like Final Fantasies. You know anything that needed to save Earthbound needed it. Well, Mother, I guess at that point. Uh, baseball Stars. Anything you had to save data. Tech Mobile. Super Tech Mobile. Uh, you had to have a place to put the information because they could not write back to the Mask ROMs. And the reason they do that is to save money. Money is important, where you can use a very small SRAM, but then a large mask ROM. So here is a Super Nintendo cartridge without the shell. We have a battery that powers the board so it can save. We have, this is the mask ROM here. This is the SRAM. So when you save a game, let's say you are playing a game, it is reading the data from here, going down in the Super Nintendo, and then when you go to save, let's say you're playing Mario World, for example, you beat a level and it asks you to save. Like, you know, you beat, you beat the haunted house, that's you save. And then you come up and it'll actually write to this chip here. It will not write to the mask ROM, it'll write to the SRAM. And the reason to do that is because this SRAM is much smaller and much cheaper to use than this mask ROM. So these mask ROMs here could get up to four megabytes in size. Whereas this only needed kilobytes. Like this one is a 64 kilobyte of SRAM right there. So it does not need much and they did that to save money. They're doing the same thing with 3DS carts. They'll do the same thing probably if they want to save data to the to the, um, to the the cartridge. They'll do the same thing with the Switch. Now, it's a big deal because there is a company called Macronix and ExtraROM. They develop and R&D these chips and these boards they use in the 3DS, and they have at this point developed a 32 gig I don't want to say prototype, but it's not really used yet because they were developing it apparently for Nintendo. And the idea here is they will then have 32 gigs of storage for the Switch, which which should be enough um, for now. I know some games may get larger than that, and I'm sure they'll keep developing because technology is going to keep moving. So I'm sure eventually you get to 64 gig, and then do you really need to go above that? Because a dual layer Blu-ray only holds 50. And trust me when I say the PS4 and the Xbox One, Sony and Microsoft, they are slowly getting away from physical media uh, and they just want you to download everything. So at that point, file size does not matter. Nintendo seems to care more about the physical media to the point where they are R&Ding and figuring out uh, different cards they can use to give it more space. If they can come out with 32 gig cards at launch, 
games like Skyrim, which is 20 gigs, you know, the special edition. Um, games like Battlefield, any big games, Mass Effect, should be able to fit on there. And if they're a little bigger than that, I'm sure just some compression techniques and stuff will let them get that game on there. And there's also a chance, because it's developed for ARM, ARM games tend to be slightly smaller than x86, so there's a good chance that these games may shrink in size when it goes there. Not by much, though. It's not a huge file difference. It's maybe a gig or two, so don't get too excited about that. And of course, there's compression because they can actually compress files like audio and textures and then let them basically uncompress while they're playing. It'll be a little easier to read from the cartridge rather than a disc. I remember the 360 had some really bad texture pop-ins at times, especially with the games like Rage, where it would read from the disc and then it would load the textures. Whereas with a cartridge, we've all talked about this. I see you guys talking about in the comments. The read-write times are significantly faster by a lot. It's like an SSD compared to a hard drive. Um, and what that'll do is it'll let it pull textures and stuff faster and we wouldn't really notice a pop-in issue. And that's fine. They can probably do that. They could probably even take some of it, compress it onto the cartridge, and then un like basically decompress it and install some parts to the switch. You know, because then we'll have basically an SD card in there or the system memory, and it could read from both places at the same time, and it could unpack a 40 gig, uh, 40, 45 gig file from a 32 gig SD card. It's very possible. Uh, so I, and I also like cartridges, obviously, because of the durability of them. I'm careful with my games, but there's a lot of people out there that aren't. And unfortunately, at this point, we don't know which games are going to become hard to find in the future. And if we can keep those games around, uh, I know there's a lot of people who want games like Yakuza 2 on the PS2 or, you know, games like that. And they're just destroyed because they're discs, you know. So if we can keep them alive by using a cartridge, that would be great as well. So I'm looking forward to buying older, car obviously buying cartridges. It'll feel kind of like the old days. They're not as big, obviously. So I guess it'll feel just like buying a 3DS game, but it's still cool to see their main system start to use cartridges. I, I like that idea. So, um, but what do you guys, what do you guys think about their move to cartridges? Do you think 32 gigs is enough? Do you think compression will help them if the game is bigger than that? But definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And there's another video coming tomorrow. And I had this thought while I was doing some research for another video. Wouldn't it be cool if GameCube games made an appearance on the Switch? We just gotta figure out if the X1 can handle it, but we might have already figured that out, so I'll see you guys tomorrow.